So what brought you out here to the West Coast? Well, when I uh, enrolled in college, I, uh, uh, in addition to studying engineering, I enrolled in ROTC, Air Force ROTC. So I, um, um, my father had um, been in the Air Force, and I guess I was kind of following in his footsteps. And those are the Vietnam days, you know, and I didn't think I wanted Army ROTC, and I didn't think I wanted to be out to sea in a, on a Navy ship, you know, for a year or whatever, however long they were, it was. Right. So I chose Air Force. And so I uh, graduated in 1970 with a degree in engineering and a commission in the Air Force. And then I, I got my orders, and I wanted the West Coast, you know, sunny California, and the order said Tacoma, Washington. And I went, Tacoma, Washington? Frozen tundra. Oh, no. <laughs> that far north, I couldn't believe it. But what, what can you do? You have to report. Right. So I drove out here in my little red van with a big white stripe on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pulling a compressor, actually, a big compressor on wheels, my first compressor, because now you know, I'm a, an instructor. I've been teaching at the college for a couple of years. And um, so I, you know, I was self-sufficient, you know, with a five-bottle cascade system in the back of my van, all my tanks, and uh, my You're little compressor. To go. So I report for duty. <laughs> And uh, coming through Washington, it was gorgeous. And after you know getting moved in and getting you know settled in and taking a few months off, I you know from diving, you know just getting acquainted with the area, I you know, went diving. My first dive was, you know, strangely enough, at Purdy. Uh -huh. um, there's a little tower out there as you go over the bridge. Uh -huh. There was one of the men that worked in the civil service uh, that lived out there on the beach, invited me out there to go diving off of his beach. And so even though there was nothing to see, just seeing a, some starfish, seeing a, a few little fish swimming around, sand dollar. No thermocline. <laughs> no thermocline. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It's just plain old cold. Yeah, just right. <laughs> and, I, and I certainly didn't have the right equipment for it. You know, I had one of these uh, 3 16 inch U.S. divers box suits, you know, shark skin. Uh, high waist pants, wasn't even a Farmer John, uh -huh. with uh, zippers in the arms and legs. And um, and then I had that was so flexible. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was flexible and cold, <laughs> but I loved every every minute of it. You know, I had a great time uh, out there. Just loved it. And uh, then I met Joe, uh, my partner uh, to be in Lighthouse, and um, you know, and then uh, we upgraded my gear a little bit. You know, like he gave me a vest. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> so I got a vest. You know, my my zippered boots were too big for me anyway. He gave me some socks. And so I started to get, you know, stay, uh, stay a little warmer. Well, I know you and Joe were really into photography. How did all that get started? <clears throat> well, you know, I wanted to take pictures underwater. I'd see all these things, and, you know, and then I'd try to remember, let's see, exactly what, what, what were they. And, I, and there wasn't very many books either. So uh, I wanted to take some pictures and, um, and bring them back with me and show people, you know, uh, what, I'd be, what I was doing. And um, I first, uh, you know, bought a, a Nikonis camera, and I think my first camera was a, Nikon, was a Nikonis II. Uh -huh. Joe got, ended up with the original Nikonis. And so um, we uh, started out with flashes, with flash bulbs, and the subsea strobes had just, uh, I think were just launched in about 1970, 71. And so um, we saved our money up and we got uh, a subsea strobe. And so anyway, then the pictures started taking, or, you know, were, were a little better. And uh, as we progressed with our photography, you know, we kept improving our equipment. And so um, uh, he and I eventually took a, enough pictures of marine life where we decided to put a book together. And so we, uh, we, we co-authored a book on underwater marine life of Puget Sound uh, with the, the actual pictures of the animals in Puget Sound. So, it's one um, of my first purchases when I came up here was your book. So. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> So, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> so that was a big project. I couldn't believe, you know, how much time it took to produce that number of pictures that were printable um, because we still weren't using the best equipment. Um, the best equipment costs a lot of money. So, so anyway, we took a lot, of, a lot of pictures, and we were diving every single week, sometimes three, four, five times a week, um, every single week for I don't know how long, a year and a half. Um, and the only thing that stopped us probably was, you know, uh, opening up a dive store. Sure. Yeah. That was uh, what we wanted to do. Very neat. So once you started your business, I noticed you 
expanded to a variety of locations. What spawned you spreading out from Tacoma? <coughs> well, uh, the first dive store, actually, um, we worked with um, uh, a dive store in Tacoma. So Joe and I were both uh, serving on a military base, McCord. And we worked with a local dive store in town, which was called Pacific Reef. And um, at that time, there was a gentleman by the name of Neil Hurd, and he had a, a partner uh, that uh, we saw in there once in a while by the name of Walt Amadon. <laughs> and so um, Joe and I would bring our students from the base to meet at uh, Neil's and Walt's store uh, before, uh, so they could um, you know, get whatever they needed or, or whatever, and then off we went to our, do our, our uh, checkout dives. So um, Joe and I had talked, and it was our goal to open up a dive store one day. So we, um, we Joe uh, talked, approached Neil and said, Neil, you're our friend. You know, we want to open up a dive store, but we really don't want to open it close to you because, you know, that would be competing with you. Where would be a good place to open up a dive store? And Neil didn't hesitate. He said, Renton. So, you know, we went, okay, Neil says Renton, so we'll go open up a dive store in Renton. That was uh, probably late 1971 when that conversation happened. And so, anyway, we didn't know that Neil um, had a dive store in Renton. Oh, no. <laughs> and went broke. <laughs> oh, no. Had to close it down. And so, and I think Neil saw that, you know, Joe and I, we had a lot of students, you know, because we had the base and we knew how to market on that base, and we right. always brought a lot of students. In fact, we were teaching more students in his dive store. And we always met there, and he could see that he was, you know, he didn't want to have, be anywhere near Joe and I because, you know, we would be real competition. So uh, I think he just sent us down there to take care of us. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out. So I learned it doesn't really make any difference where you're at if you just simply are healthy and you go to work and you do the best job you can and you take care of your customers, the customers will come to you. And we had a thriving business, you know, in Renton. And so Joe and I, uh, being in the same location, we realized we didn't need to be on the same floor together. You know, so we uh, we had a lot of customers coming down from uh, the north end of Seattle because there was only like one dive store in the north end of Seattle, and because of the lack of competition, they didn't treat their customers very well, and so they just a lot of customers would do would try to go out of their way to to not do business with them, and and they would find us in Renton. And so we decided, well, you know, there's a, a crying need for another dive store in the north end of Seattle. So in 1974, we bought a building and we opened up our second lighthouse on Lake City Way. Uh -huh. And uh, that proved to be an instant success. You know, Joe and I would alternate going back and forth. You know, some days I'd be in Renton, some days I'd be in Lake City Way. And uh, we doubled our business, you know, within two, you know, 18 months to two years. Um, and that was really successful. And uh, that was in 1974 we opened that store. Our, and our next venture to open up a store was in 1977, and we bought the original Divers, Divers Hut in Bremerton, which was a branch of Imperial. Okay. So we bought that because it was for sale, and we thought, you know, we'd do well over there. But owning that dive store was like owning a store in a foreign country. And so, um, it, it was one thing to be successful when Joe was there or I was there. It was another thing to not be there and expect somebody else to... Treat it as their own. Yeah, and, or, and, and bring business in. And, and we didn't know that because, you know, it, the lighthouse was the first business for both of us. You know, and it came very, very easy. So it seemed. But that's because we were experienced. We were enthusiastic. We were honest. We treated people right. We took people diving. And none of that stuff was happening at the third store. Within two years, we realized we'd made a big mistake. And so we ended up, uh, Joe found a buyer, and we ended up uh, selling that one off. So we're back to two stores. So about that time, I know you were engaged with a lot of trips to the San Juans and that local area. How did those play out? Well, it's, um, <clears throat> we did a lot of San Juan trips. You know, um, we, I met a, uh, a man by the name of Gordon Bradley once. He, uh, he walked in and asked about, you know, uh, if we were doing dive charters and things like that. And, and at the time, you know, we didn't have a lot of boats to choose from. And he currently was doing Westport salmon charters and had built a custom boat for that. 
and he wanted to get out of it because he saw the handwriting on the wall that that industry was going to go downhill. So um, <clears throat> he disappeared for six months, and I found out that what he had done, he'd pulled out two, his two old engines and installed two brand new engines and made some changes on the boat for diving, and then came back and says, I'm ready to go. So we sat down and we developed a boat diving program. Um, you know, how we were going to be uh, diving, the rules, the live boating, the pickups, the, you know, wrote a manual on it, tra trained our employees, and Joe and I led the effort, and we started running dive trips to the San Juans and locally every week. Uh -huh. And uh, we did that for years and uh, took people diving. Had a lot of great experiences, you know, uh, diving in the San Juans, um, you know, with Gordon, who was a great, great skipper. Neat. So. So after that played out, then uh, my memory says that you were uh, getting more engaged with manufacturing or customizing some of your own equipment, that you, <coughs> you had your own brands at one time. So how did that come about? Well, <coughs> let's see. It, uh, probably in the mid-70s, you know, there was an industry in Alaska and Cordova that was called kelping, which was basically harvesting herring roe on a kelp. And so uh, they, a lot of people up there needed compressors. And being graduating in engineering, I, um, um, I decided to uh, manufacture my own hookah compressors. You know, so I'd you know have my frames fabricated and arranged to have my uh, the oilless hookah pumps you know shipped in, and I would arrange to do the. Uh, the Briggs and Stratton engines from that distributor and, and all the other connecting hoses and stuff. So, and I would put my own packages together. So that was probably my first um, venture into that. Um, I remember getting your catalogs. That's, that's oh, my part <laughs> of the story here. <laughs> right. So, and you know, we talked to some of the manufacturers, you know, we'd uh, basically ask Harvey's to, to build suits our way. And, um, you know, because you know we had an interesting suit, which was a three h three eighths thick skin in uh, jacket, hood attached, quarter inch hood attached, on over a nylon two uh, quarter inch Farmer John, and we wanted that thicker rubber on the upper part of the suit, and that was just a a design that we came up with because we dived a lot, and we we you know when you're an instructor and you're teaching a lot and you're leading groups and you're diving a lot, you, you know, you, you, you learn what it takes to stay warm. And that's the suit that we designed to help us stay warm. And then we went to um, um, private labeling some, some suits, I mean some other products, you know. We, uh, we had all the weight belts, no, we had all the weights screened with our name, uh, the vinyl coated weights. Uh -huh. uh, we built a, um, actually, we, you know, um, we didn't actually design it. We actually copied a belt out of Portland um, with permission. So it was a rubber belt with metal wires, you know, uh, with tension. And then we also bought some bullet weights. And so we introduced the bullet weights on rubber belts, you know, with metal to metal clasps that would stretch around the body. And then the weights wouldn't be shifting around your body while you're uh, diving. And so that was a product that we uh, introduced. And then uh, Sequest private labeled BCs for us. You know, so we had uh, back inflation VC, a ch you know, horse collar VC. Um, we never did uh, gauges or regulators because we thought that was serious equipment, you know. But, um, you know, we would do boots. We'd have to you know, organize a, a 500 pairs of boots buy from one of the manufacturers and they put our name on it. So we did a lot of that kind of stuff. And, um, and that got your name really out there, too. I suppose it did, you know. It did for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did. And then we also got into commercial diving equipment. So in my background, you know, I did some commercial diving, you know, um, in college as an instructor working in the Illinois River and uh, in Blackwater. <laughs> and so I, I had a little tuition, bit. tuition, I understand. Yeah, you, know, you, you would know. And so... Um, yeah, you know, we got into commercial diving where we got into helmets and band masks and underwater communications and closed circuit television inspections. Um, so um, in the early days, we'd actually go out and do some of that work. And, and then later on, I was just selling the equipment, you know, to commercial diving companies. And, you know, I could have always gone out there and done the work, too. But, you know, um, we thought it was a conflict of interest to compete with the guys that we were trying to sell equipment to and then bid against them on a, on a similar job. So we made a choice not to dive commercially, but to be equipment suppliers. 